What is up guys? Thanks for being here on a Tuesday again. This is Q&A number three. What other breeds would you use as a service dog? I'm really a fan of Goldens. If I was going to get another service dog, I'd probably get another Golden. I don't know if it's cheating because it's half Golden, but I also love Golden Doodles. All the excellent of Golden, but without the shedding and with potentially some of the brains of a Poodle, which is incredible. Poodles are really smart. I love German Shepherds, but I've had so many bad experiences with running into untrained German Shepherds that I don't think I personally would ever get one, like even as a pet, which is really unfortunate because I think they're one of the most beautiful dogs that there is. Let's see. Um, really anything in the Fab Four. I'd definitely go for a lab. Yeah, kind of a boring answer. Oh, and I also love Collies, like an Aussies, those kinds of dogs, the ones that are herding dogs that are just kind of crazy. I love those. Let's see what else we have. What is Buddy's favorite toy? He loves anything with crinkles, and he's really into plushy ones too, soft plushy toys. So a plush with crinkles, primo. How old is Buddy? He's three. Most interesting post-pregnancy cravings. Let's see, gosh. Um, I've been all about the Huel recently. I know I went on for like five minutes in my last video about Huel, but I'm really into Huel right now. I really hated pickles while I was pregnant, which is funny because I loved them before I was pregnant. Hated them, now I'm super into them again, and since I didn't have them for like a year and I don't understand why I didn't like them, I'm just going hog on the pickles right now. Postpartum cravings. French fries, but I'm always into French fries. You don't need to be postpartum to be into French fries. Yeah, I guess that's it. The other thing is just hamburgers, but that's also something that I was into when I was pregnant. I'm really into the hamburgers right now. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna be falling asleep tonight and I'm gonna be like, oh, that was the perfect thing to say to that question. And I'm, gosh, this is driving me crazy. Oh, and do I even need to mention like wine, seltzers, anything with a little bit of alcohol I'm super into? obviously, because I couldn't drink for a very long time. And I'm not a heavy drinker or anything, like I'm not getting drunk, but it is super nice to have a glass of wine with dinner every once in a while, so I don't want to call that a craving, but it's something that I'm enjoying more postpartum than I was when I was pregnant, obviously, by a lot. I need a drink. This is non-alcoholic, by the way, just to make that clear. Okay. When did you get diagnosed with POTS and migraines? I got diagnosed with migraines at the beginning of 2017. Well, I got diagnosed with chronic migraines at the beginning of 2017. I started showing symptoms in 2016 though, and I'd been having episodic migraines for a solid 10 years before that, eight years, I don't know, a long time before that. And I knew that those were migraines because they were the classic painful ones. So a long time for migraines and POTS, end of 2019. I don't know if I said that yet. So it's been a year and a few months. Are you considered having normal or severe POTS? I wouldn't call myself severe. I don't know what I technically am, but I definitely don't think that I'm severe because I know that some people with POTS, their heart rate goes to like 180, 190, 200 something. I'm almost never up there. I'm basically, um, I'm basically like, the only time I've ever gotten into that dangerous zone is when I was potsy and also exercising. But for the most part, I only go up to maybe the 150s. And on a typical day, my heart rate's only spiking by maybe 40 points when I stand up, maybe 50. So I'll go from 80 to 120, and that's my typical jump. So I definitely don't think that I'm severe. Okay, time to switch sides. How did you meet your husband and how did he propose? My husband and I met at Taekwondo. He's a fourth degree black belt and he co-owned a Taekwondo studio that was kind of near the college where I went. So I joined the studio as a way to blow off steam during college and married my teacher. We went over this in the last q and I think. And um, how did he propose? It was a scavenger hunt. Guys, I'm so obsessed with scavenger hunts that the moment I knew it was a scavenger hunt, I started sobbing. I didn't even know that I was getting proposed to at the end of it. 
I was just crying because I was so happy to do a scavenger hunt. So he nailed it on the theme and I think it all ended up going well. We went around to places where we used to go when we were dating. We went to our first apartment together. We went to like a park where we had some memories. It was really cute. And then we ended at this pizza place that I like a lot. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta, <laughs> I need to calm myself down a little bit. Basically, Oktoberfest crashed our proposal. We got there and he was like, oh wow, that changes everything. Cause the whole street where we were planning on, well, where he was planning for us to be was Oktoberfest, which is awesome. What's your favorite color? It's purple. My favorite color was blue for a while. I had a little phase of red, but I really like purple. Purple's my color. And I'm okay with that because it's the migraine color. So it's just, it's my thing. Migraines and purple, anything purple, that's, that's me. I accept that. What is Buddy's favorite snack? Oh, so Buddy loves chicken. Chicken, everything. He loves chicken. Let's see, what else? Mmm, I guess the, the other thing he goes crazy for, I guess poultry in general. He loves chicken, he loves turkey. Like deli meat type things, loves. And can I tell you guys something honestly? This is a little bit embarrassing to say, but I think that Buddy really likes chocolate. Let me explain. Let me put this down. I know that chocolate is toxic to dogs, so I've never given it to Buddy. I'm not planning on giving it to Buddy. However, Whenever I make oatmeal and I put chocolate chips on top and they get all melty and you get that aroma of chocolate, just, oh, chocolate. Buddy goes on perfect behavior mode. I'm telling you. And I'm pretty sure that's his way of trying to get me to give him some chocolate. I'm pretty sure. I feel awful. I think at the end of his life I might actually make that happen. Like he might actually be one of those dogs that gets chocolate on the way to being put down if that's how things end up going. I think it's a love that he has never tasted. <laughs> I feel so nuts talking about him like that. Okay, here we go. How is the baby doing? Oh my gosh, you guys. The baby is so cute. The baby is doing great. She is two months old, just over two months old now, which is really exciting and I absolutely can't believe that the time has flown. I know everybody says that, it gets super old and everyone's like, oh, trust me, the time flies. Like, no, but it flies. And I have to say, she's a really great baby. I'm much more comfortable like this. Yeah, she's an awesome baby. My husband and I do try to be very attentive and pay really close attention to her even though she can't talk, just like we did with Buddy when he was a puppy and when we were training him. Like, we try really hard to pay attention to cues with her, and when we find new things out, we make sure to tell each other, or if we figure out, like, oh, when she does this face, it means she has to pee, or something like that. Like, I feel like us communicating and us paying close attention to her has made it much better of a transition, like, having her in the home and everything, and it's also helped us with minimizing the crying. We have her in a bassinet at night, and we both make sure that each of us gets ample time to sleep, so we feel good, she's getting what she needs, and that's all contributing to her being what most people would call an easy baby. But that said, she is still a baby. She still gets fussy. We still have things that we're trying to figure out because her cues and her needs are always changing. And if we're being completely honest, I'm going through it. There are definitely hard days going on over here and there's a lot to my health and my postpartum journey that I haven't shared with you guys yet. But slowly but surely, those videos will continue to come out and you guys will learn more and more about what I'm going through right now. It's hard to talk about nonchalantly and excitedly because motherhood is difficult. It's a hard transition and that doesn't mean that it isn't the best transition that I've ever done because it freaking is. Being a mom is literally the best thing that's ever happened to me, but this is hard. I'm in a little bit of a hard time right now and I guess I just really needed to say that because I think the question was just asking how the baby was, not how I was, so Let's pretend that the question was asking how I am too. Where was I going with that, actually? Um, how's the baby? Oh, I see how I got on that tangent. Okay, so the baby is doing great, and I think some of it's nature, and I think some of it's nurture. She's a good baby, and she's consistent, and she seems to be trying to communicate with us, but also like, yeah, gosh, she's a baby. She's, she's got pipes. She can yell like her mom. <laughs> I'm not an angry person, but I do sing a lot. 
It's not very often that there isn't something coming out of my mouth. Was Buddy almost called something else? Also nicknames. <laughs> I've never shared this on my channel before. I was begging my husband to let me call Buddy Hambone. I wanted his name to be Hambone. I thought that would just be the funniest thing. To have a golden retriever named Hambone be like, Hambone, come here! Come here, Hambone! Or Hamburger, one of the two, because I just, just, Hamburger, can you imagine calling a dog Hamburger? Like, can you imagine if Buddy was running around and we're like, hey, Hamburger, get back here. Hamburger, sit. I, I don't know. I thought it would be really funny. But we ended up calling him Buddy for a couple of reasons. One, my husband just always called dogs Buddy. So it was easy for him because he's always like, hey, Buddy, when he sees a dog. So that was one. Two, I was having seizures at the time. And it was like the first year of my illness stuff really rearing its head so we thought Buddy was a really sweet name because my husband was sometimes working nights and Buddy would be there with me at night when I got home from work to be my seizure buddy so that's how he got his name Buddy. Any nicknames? Um, I call him Buddy Hambone sometimes. We call him Bubs or Bubba or Bud Bud but we don't really have any clever nicknames other than maybe Buddy Hambone. How tall and how much does Buddy weigh? Love you so much. I love you too! I actually have no idea how tall Buddy is. I don't know. But he weighs somewhere around 75 to 80 pounds, depending on the time of year. He's a little bit lighter in the summer, and then he puts on a little bit of weight in the winter. And he's actually a graze feeder, so he does that on his own. That's just like his natural fluctuation weight. Unfortunately, that'll be it for today because I can hear little one getting fussy in the other room, so I need to go in a hurry here, but thank you so much for joining on a Tuesday. I will see you on Friday with another regularly scheduled video, and um, I guess that's it. All right, bye guys.